Western world is the conclusion tonight of Passover. Passover is a seven-day feast. There is no celebration so ancient and universal happening all over the world as this. It was given by God himself. And so it's especially powerful. It's celebrated in one way or in another by two peoples. One are the children of Israel, the Jewish people by flesh and blood, celebrating the redemption from Egypt. The other are the people of Messiah, the spiritual children of Israel. If you are born again, you are that. You are grafted in. And so in celebrating, it's also celebrating your own salvation because it has everything to do with Messiah. Imagine, forgetting you're, you're here, imagine it is 2,000 years ago. You're in the upper room with Messiah. Oil light all over. It is the, it is the the month of Nisan, right in the middle, in Jerusalem, the sun is setting. In the upper room, a trumpet sounds from the temple, signaling the Passover is about to begin. Imagine you're with him. Well, he's with us now. He said, I have desired to celebrate this Passover with you. We know the exact words that he said. He said this, and lift up your cup, as you would if you were a disciple 2,000 years ago. Well, you're a disciple now. He said this, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu V'Kiyamanu V'Higiyanu Lazman Hazeb, Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who has preserved our lives, sustained us, and brought us to this day. Now the Passover begins with the first cup, which is called the cup of sanctification, which sets apart this time from everything else. Luke 22, when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, Take this, share it among yourselves. This is the opening blessing of the path. This is the exact words that he said. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. In giving thanks, we now partake. This is the first cup. Take, you can take a sip. Now, this is the second cup. This is now called the cup of judgment. It stands for the price of Passover. That Passover comes with a great price. It came with the blood of the Lamb in Egypt. It comes with the blood of Messiah for each of us. Now, it is traditional to take this and dip it onto, you know, take your, you don't have to do this though, but to take your pinky and dip it for every judgment. If you want to do it, it's only you, you know, but you don't have to do it. But I'm going to do it here. But, you, but, but say it with me. I'm going to say the ten plagues in their original language. Ready? First, first plague. Dom. You can do better than that. that. That would not have done anything in Egypt. That would have done nothing in Egypt. Dom. That means blood. Sephardea. That's frogs. Kanim. It's vermin. Arov. That's flies. Dever. Plague. Shechim. Boils. Barad. Hell. Arbe. Locusts. Hoshech. Darkness. And the final judgment is called Machat Bichorot, which is the death of the firstborn son. Now this brings us to the mystery of this. This is called the Zoroah. Say it. Zoroah. Now most Jewish people don't really understand the full thing about this, except a little bit, but it, it holds a mystery. In the Hebrew Scriptures it says, by the Zoroah, God created the universe. Interesting. It says also, by the Zoroah, he redeemed his people from Egypt. And then the prophet said, by his Zoroah, he will bring salvation to the ends of the earth. The Zoroah. This is called the Zoroah. A lamb's bone. The bone of a lamb. Passover is all about the lamb. It all centers on the lamb. But what is the Zoroah? In the prophet Isaiah's prophecy, Isaiah 53, which is, it says, who has believed our report? And then in Hebrew it says, and to whom has the Zoroah been revealed? The Zoroah of God, whom has it been revealed? 
It can be translated the arm or power of God, but then it reveals it. It said, then it talks about the one who's going to die for our sins as a lamb. But it's calling him the Zoroah, the arm of God. So by, it means by the same one who's going to die for our sins, he's the same one through whom God created the universe. John 1. Same one through whom he saved his people, the lamb. Same one through whom he's going to send salvation to the ends of the earth. Messiah is the Zoroah, the lamb. The mystery of the Lamb is throughout the Bible, throughout the Scriptures. When Abraham is going to offer up his, he has to call to take his son to offer him to God. And his son says, Father, where is the Lamb? And, and Abraham answers, God will provide himself the Lamb. And then Moses writes, in that mountain it shall be seen. That mountain is Mount Moriah, the very place where Messiah, Jesus, died as the Lamb. Then on Passover, the lamb again. Then in the temple, the lamb on that mountain where Abraham and Isaac were. And then when John the Baptist first saw him, what did he say? Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Messiah had to come to Jerusalem because that's where the lamb has to be offered up. He had to die on Passover because that's the day that the lamb has to be offered up. And for those who haven't heard me say this on Passover, what did they do? They put the blood of the lamb on the top of the doorpost, the beam, on the side of the doorpost, and the other side of the doorpost. Put it together, it makes a triangle, connect the dots, that points up from man to God. But ages later, God would take his own lamb and also put his blood on the beams, on, on beams of wood, in three places, here, here, and here. Together it makes a triangle pointing down from God to us. Put it together, you have the Star of David. Before Passover they weren't moving anywhere. We, get, we think of Passover just being free from bondage. They could have been free from bondage and they could have stayed in Egypt, it wouldn't have been right. But the power of salvation is not just to free them, it's to change them and move them. What did Messiah say? He said, I am the door. Oh, yeah. uh, the door. What does that door do? We say, oh, that's great. It's a door. Um, what does it mean? A door allows you to move through something that you could not move through before. Without a door, what do you have? A wall. And a wall stops you from moving, but a door allows you to go through the wall. In other words, where it was impossible, now it's possible. Messiah is the door. He gives you the power to move through something that you couldn't move through before. They couldn't move through Egypt, and there are things, in our, and we couldn't move to salvation. And even in our life now, there are walls, there are things that we get stuck in, but he gives the power to go through them. There used to be this cartoon on, on television, I don't know if anybody remembers it, where you'd buy a kit, and there would be this cartoon character who would get in trouble, and you'd put the, the plastic on your television. He'd say, help me out now. And you'd write in your cartoon, you'd like, I got to get out. You know, I'm in prison. And he, you'd put a door, and then he would go through the door. Okay. So nobody remembers it. That's how, how old I am. So he was trapped it's like that. And you bake it. Well, the power of, of Passover is you're in an impossible situation. It's a wall. But that's when you take the power of the lamb, which is the power of the door. And any, any obstacle that's not God's will by the power of the lamb, you can go through it. You're dealing with something. It's an impossible situation. God gives you the power. What does he say? I make a, he makes a way where there is no way. You're dealing with something. You've never been able to overcome it. Some sin, some bondage. You still have the power to go through it. If you take that, it's a wall, but God gives you a door. He'll make a way where there is no way. We saw the blood of the lamb on the beams of the wood. You know, on the beams of the cross. Well, what does that mean? You know, it's the same blood that was on the beams of the door. What does that tell you? The cross is a doorway. Through it, we get to salvation, but also it gives us the power to move. That means it allows you to go where you couldn't go, to get moving, to become unstuck, to grow, to change. God doesn't want you in a rut. He wants you moving. Passover gave the power of God, his people, to start moving to the promised land. You know, when you first got saved, you, you probably, without even knowing it, you knew it. It's a doorway. But well, you knew that there was something that just opened for your life, and I'm going to start walking through. You started walking through it, and everything started changing for your life. But what happens is we start getting settled in. And then we get settled in the Lord and we stop growing and we start moving. 
We need the power of that door again. And God has given you that power. You can use it again. And that's what God's saying. Messiah told the crippled man, get up and walk. Now the guy had never walked. He never walked, but he had to believe he could do something that he could never do before. But by the power of Messiah, I can do it. So even if you've never been able to have success in something, you've never been able to get through that sin or get through that bondage or get through that situation, you can claim that power now. The power of Messiah. You know, the nation of Israel got to the, a barrier. They're going into the promised land. They get to a barrier. It's the Jordan River. They can't go to the promised land because there's a Jordan River. But you know what the word Hebrew means? The word Hebrew, and if you're born again, you're a spiritual Hebrew, it means one who crosses over. Amen. You cross over. They all crossed over to get in. Now, the, but the Lord told the priests, step into that river. Even though it wasn't open, once they put their foot down, the river stops. And that's the power, but you've got to walk on it. What else is it about a doorway? What else does a doorway do? I mean, I know this is like life on earth 101, but it's actually profound. It doesn't just give you the power to move to something. It gives you the power to leave something. The power of the Lamb is to be able to leave what you couldn't leave before. The Red Sea was a barrier. God said, lift up your staff, Moses. And see this up. Well, that staff was what's used in Passover. It's the Passover staff. Yet it opens up the Red Sea. The power of the Lamb, so it opens up again. The power of, of the Lamb is to open up what you can never make a way where there's no way. And they walk through the way, and then what happens? The Red Sea closes. And once it closes, that's Egypt is over. They never see it again. What is that? When you open a door, it opens up, but then you close it. I know, I get it. I know this is 101 life, but, but it's important. Because God opens a door. The door that is open to your new life is also a door that you have to close behind you. Yes. Then, so the new life won't come after you. You know, just like so, so Pharaoh won't come after you. The power to say goodbye. You know, what is Messiah called? He's called the Prince of Life, right? Or, and he's called the Prince of Peace. What is peace in Hebrew? What does shalom mean? Hello and Goodbye. He is the prince of the power to say goodbye, shalom. And if you say goodbye, shalom, you'll be able to say hello to something new. The power for you, the, the more you want to know new things in your life, is, the, this is going to be exactly equal to how much you close that door on the old. Because God doesn't want the old things in there, because the old will make everything old. You close the door, you come into the new thing, and I, it's just as important to open the door and close the door. No, I'm closed. God gives you the power to close the door on the things that should not be in your life anymore. And by that, you have newness. It is directly together. I am the door, he said. Now, why don't people move in the Lord? They don't, number one, they don't believe they can. They're not believing what God said. If you don't believe you can be free, you're not going to be free, even though you can be free. Number two, some people are not, on, they're not comfortable because it's new things. I don't want the new things. I'm comfortable with the old things, even if I'm in bondage. There's fear. It's another reason why people don't change and move. How many blessings would the Hebrews have missed if they never walked through it all? I mean, imagine, it's kind of scary to walk through the Red Sea. That's kind of scary. At any moment, it can clap, but, but behind them was also scary. You know, Peter, Peter walked on water. He had, the miracle was already there, but he had to step out of the boat and go on to it. If he didn't believe, he never would have done it. How many miracles are waiting in your life? There are all sorts of promises in God, and they're all good. But you have to do it as he said it. You need to know, so you need to, you, you know, the promises are there, but you've got to walk into them. They're there. I mean, God has so much that's there. It says he prepared these things that are there, but you have to walk into them. If you don't walk into them, it won't happen. Every day you should be applying the power. God it gave you the door. He gave you the power. So even if I'm blocked, I'm not going to stay blocked. I'm going to walk through to God's will. If it's God's will, no wall will stop me. The Lamb puts you on a journey. You don't stop. That journey doesn't end. Look at Paul. Paul said, but this one thing I do. I forget what lies behind, and I press forward to what is ahead for the upward call. And Paul was a blessed man because he always walked forward into the promise. He was moving into newness. The Bible says we're to move out of oldness into newness. So new things are things you didn't do before, you didn't know before, you never saw before. you got to say, yes, Lord, I'm wanting it. Abraham moved. Jacob moved. Moses moved. David moved. Elijah moved. The apostles moved. They're all moving. And God kept blessing them. The power of the Lamb is to get moving. 
for change, for blessing. And he took the power of the Lamb, took them all the way from Egypt, all the way into the promised land. And what does that tell you? Even when they messed up for 40 years, the power of the Lamb still got them in at the end. But the, the Lamb will get you there if you go with the Lamb. It's not always easy to go forward. There are obstacles. There are challenges. There are fights. There are good fights. There are setbacks. But you've got the power to always move ahead. Paul said, let everybody have the same attitude I, I have, which is, I don't stop moving ahead. Forget what's behind. I'll, I'll, hold, I'll celebrate the good, but I'll forget the bad. I'm moving ahead in you, no matter what. I'm moving ahead. I'm not, not going to stop growing until I'm finished with this life, and then I'll be in the promised land. Amen. Don't miss it. The Bible says you, oh, you are to live in the newness of life. Walk through the door. Walk through your Red Sea. Walk through the barrier. Don't get stuck anymore. Don't believe it anymore. Walk through your Jordan and you'll enter the promises God has. The Lamb of God says to you, I am the door. Not just the door. I am your door. I have made a way for you where there was no way 